are on our way to the gym and this time it's a chest workout yesterday was a back workout and just like with the back workout we're going to see where the strength level is right now and upon this we will build uh, you know for the next few months to increase strength and strength comes first and then the muscle mass will follow so even the chest even though it's one of my stronger points I do still think in the side chest can be improved quite a lot so the chest just like a lot of different muscles in the muscle uh, all of the muscle groups in the body can never be big enough so let's get to work all right and then we're jumping straight into the workout now keep in mind this is the second workout i'm doing after the contest basically so first we had back in 100 friend fit gym right here and now we're doing the chest so it's the first true chest workout doing it on the trustworthy smith machine the trustworthy exercise the incline smith machine bench press now i love this movement because this movement really stabilizes the way you perform a bench press. I used to do a lot of incline bench presses with a free weight. And of course, it is an amazing exercise as well. But most of those, you know, standardized uh, bench presses with the incline there is at least 45 degrees. If you look at the incline here, it's a lot less. And because it's a lot less, there's less stress on the shoulders, the front delts, and way more concentration on the upper chest, which is what I'm truly focusing on. And also, if you're doing the incline bench press uh, with a free weight, you can't focus purely on pushing the weight upwards, which to me, to make my chest grow uh, beyond what it already is, is important to do at least for some movements of course i will always be incorporating free weights uh in any workout but having you know kind of a hybrid between a free weight and a machine like this is a great way to make sure that the muscle you need to work is doing all the work all right so let me explain to you what i'm truly doing to improve upon my physique so of course the first few workouts won't be with super heavy weights as you can see this is the first working set which normally is a very heavy set now it still feels heavy but relatively heavy because normally i would be doing 40 to 50 kilos more but now right after prep you should not push yourself to those limits because you simply don't have the strength back yet what you need to do first is recover and that's what i'm doing so all of these trainings are mainly to maintain Maintain the muscle that I have and with the caloric surplus that I'm going into slowly increasing the calories over time I will gain muscle again but at the beginning it's impossible to jump straight back to the way you did before so I'm just going to failure which means I'm hitting the last rep uh, which I can't do another rep anymore and that's failure so no forced reps no go beyond failure because that brings you more fatigue, so less bang for your buck. It does increase hypertrophy, but just for 10%, and you gain 50% fatigue. Just throwing numbers out there, but then you kind of know what I'm talking about. More fatigue for relatively less hypertrophy, a muscle stimulus. All right, so the second working set is always going to be more reps. At least that's the idea. Right now, I'm still figuring out where my strength lies. So sometimes the first working set might already be a lighter set. And then the second working set, I will go heavier because the first one I did too many reps with. So the two rep ranges I want to hit is eight to 12 and 15 to 20. So the first one is eight to 12 and the second one is 15 to 20. And that way I can attack both rep ranges in the same exercise. So down the line, when it's more difficult to increase your strength, it's then much more convenient to have several chances per exercise to improve upon your strength because sometimes you simply will plateau at the heavy weight but at the lighter weight which normally is about 20 percent lighter in the second working set you might be able to do more reps 
easier because the less weight you do the more easy it is to push yourself for an extra rep as long as of course the range of motion and the form are perfect all right so the second movement is the dumbbell press and as i mentioned i won't be doing only machines or only stuff like that i'll always stick to the free weights which feel safe and good and this is one of those movements i really love any kind of dumbbell press i love the flat dumbbell press i love the incline dumbbell press and even the decline dumbbell press if you have a good spotter to help you reach for those dumbbells on an incline i mean decline sense and here you can see the incredible range of dumbbells of our 100% fit gym ranging all the way to 70 kilos but the most important thing is not the uh, heaviest weight it's actually the fact that there is two and a half kilos in between each and every dumbbell until the heaviest seven kilo dumbbell because a lot of gyms have they have those increments until like 40 kilos and then the increments go to five kilos each but for most people who want to be you know make very small steps in the next weight they're using those five kilo increments and even 10 kilo increments sometimes in the heaviest dumbbells is simply too much so what we decided to do is to have all the dumbbells you can possibly think of until 70 kilos and in the near future you might even have heavier ones than that as well all right the first working set for the dumbbell press so if you followed my channel for a while now you know that I work with warm-ups and then working sets so the warm-ups you saw normally would be around five reps or less just to get my body used to the heavier weight that I will be using during the working set. And the working set is always the failure. The warm-up sets, however, should not take anything away from the working set you're going to do, because the working sets are the only sets that stimulate muscle growth. So you want to leave those intact. Okay, guys. I just did the first working set on the double press. First working set, always the failure. Now we're going to do another working set with a lighter weight, but a higher rep range, hopefully. So this one was a rep range of 8 to 12. I hit 10 reps. The next one will be a lighter dumbbell. Hopefully I'm going to hit 15 reps at least, because this rep range is the higher rep range of 15 to 20 reps. So that way you train the chest in multiple rep ranges and you get stronger up across multiple rep ranges. And that's the best way to grow. So let's do it. So I kind of explain it right there. So the first working set is the heaviest one. And then the second working set is 20% lighter with, of course, lighter dumbbells then, but with more reps. It is an awesome way to progress. And lots of people have asked me, what have you done in the last year to improve upon your physique? What kind of things have you done to gain the muscle mass? A lot of people think about nutrition, rest, supplements but guys if you want to grow muscle in specific places no matter what you eat or take or supplement with won't cause that specific muscle growth there the only thing you can do is train and train very hard that is the only way to make muscle grow in the places where you want and in this case it'll be the chest 15 reps achieved okay guys next one will be the adx belt squat but we're gonna do dips on this machine one of my favorite all-time machines because you can do a belt squat on it perfect for the legs which you need to build but also dips so we're gonna start out with free weight free body weight dips and then we're going to attach maybe some weight, kind of depends on my strength right now. But you can attach a belt right here, attach some weight there, and uh, you know, make it heavier for yourself. But first, let's do some body weight dips right now. Okay, so this is one of the rare machines, rare exercises, where it's possible to use like a hybrid of a free weight machine where you can still standardize the movement very easily because of the belt 
around your waist. So that's just an amazing way to be able to perform this movement uh, because normally if you do a true free weight exercise like a body weight dip and with a dumbbell uh, you know between the legs and stuff like this every single time you perform it it might be more difficult to get up or the dumbbell size is different or the belt just you know the dipping belt doesn't feel as good you're you're using different kinds of plates it's more difficult to get up so if you use a machine like this that still feels like a free weight movement it's a lot more convenient to standardize the motion and use progressive overload to know exactly okay last time for example i did 10 reps with an added 20 kilos now i want to try 11 reps and nothing is in your way of those 11 reps uh, unless your recovery, your nutrition, or your sleep weren't up to par. But it's not going to be the machine or the effort you had to do to get into the machine that will get in your way of reaching those reps. That's really nice movement. To stretch the chest. Don't go for the contraction, really go for the stretch. Because you already pumped up the chest on the previous movement. So, an amazing exercise. So the true benefit, as I mentioned, of these dips is now that you have a good pump in the chest, at least there's a lot of blood in the muscle, the dip really function as a stretching mechanism. Because the better the pump is in the muscle, the more easy it is to get a stretch and the more effective that stretch is. In fact, it is the stretch in a muscle that causes most of the muscle growth. It is in fact, for example, not the contraction part relative to the stretch part. For example, if you do an incline bench press like the one I did at the beginning, if I would skip the stretch, I would get less hypertrophy if I would only focus on the contraction. So if I would uh, do only the stretch and not the contraction part at, at the top, I would actually get more muscle growth compared to not doing the stretch and only the contraction part. Because the muscle only knows it's fully being used if you actually go through that fullest range of motion, which is the stretched part of the muscle. Of course, you don't want to overdo it, but making sure you get it with a stretched position is the key to a full range of motion, time or attention because the more the stretch is there the more time on the tension can be there as well because the range of motion is increased and you will simply cause more muscle growth to occur across all of the muscle fibers because then you can recruit more of them as well but as you can see with this fly motion it is very important to not only stretch but also contract the target muscle at least once completely in, an, uh, in a workout like this. So for chest, when you do a dumbbell press or a bench press, it's very difficult to actually contract those packs to the max, because if you do, you would have to lock out your elbows and you would have to use your front delts. And that is not what we want to do when you train the chest. However, then we have the isolation movements, and one of them is this one right here. And you can see, since I'm still lean, what actually happens to the muscle when you perform this exercise. So when you stretch it, you can see those muscle fibers stretching out. That is a good sign. But when you contract, you can see all the blood rushing into the muscle, contracting all of those muscle fibers. You can actually see it happening right in front of you. And that is also why I'm a fan of a lean bulk where you can still see some definition. A lot of people like to bulk up to truly high body weight truly high body fat percentages and that in my opinion yes it will add strength and size but not in the correct way as a bodybuilder should because now we can actually see what's happening and if you are that incredible size without the definition you can't really see what you're training it's not as motivating it's not as you know objective what you're doing because it's very hard to also recognize a weak point in your physique when you stay just a bit leaner up you know about 10 to 12 percent body fat you can still see enough of your physique to actually objectively judge it and see what you still have to improve because in the off season everything looks big regardless this is something that i like to talk to about my clients with because a lot of them are for example at 15 percent and they still want to do a bulk 
you know, you can't really see anything grow except for the weight on the scale. And that is only half of the story. The weight on the scale has increased, the strength has to increase, but also what you see in a mirror has to improve because ultimately that is the goal of bodybuilding. Building the body. Not only the weight, not only the strength, but the body is all we want to build. And then the last movement of the day, so we did some four basic chest movements. Just the basics to get back into the groove again. This might become one of my rotations because I, you know, my split is for example back and biceps, chest and triceps, legs and arms and delts. However, that doesn't mean that after having done those four uh, workouts that when I start again it's going to be the same movements no you have rotations so I might have two to three rotations for each muscle group which means it would actually take me three entire workout splits before I do the same rotation again that allows you to actually recover from that specific you know workout routine and then to repeat it and hopefully beat yourself in whatever reps times sets you did uh, times weight you did so what you just saw is some simple rope push downs which i pretty much always like to do before hitting any tricep movements and i hit only one working set there and then this is the only set recorded of this movement but it's one of my favorites the unilateral overhead tricep extension with this cable and look at this cable it's not a regular handle attachment it's actually a rope attachment which makes it feel very natural to move this weight like this so the overhead movement always targets the long head of the tricep which is something i want to keep improving on it already has improved quite a lot when i look at the front double bicep pictures which is exactly the pose where i want to improve them at but i can still use a bit more thickness there so i did two working sets here which were not recorded but you get the idea and of course dexter is with us every single day in the gym enjoying himself and getting used to do it because he will be there pretty much the rest of his life when he's our child anyway guys i really want to thank you a lot for watching lots more footage and content is coming also a q a is coming next to the channel so if you have any questions you want to ask me make sure to put them in the comments down below and i'll make sure to answer as many as i can once again thank you for watching and don't forget to stay golden